So for this week's tutorial, I wanted to get into some questions that I've been getting from Twitter and on the YouTube comments uh, about how I work with my engineers um, and the front-end developers that I work with on both apps and websites. So I've really only done three different methods in the last five or six years of delivering um, actual designs and deliverables and specs to engineers to get them implemented. And I want to walk through real quick what those things are. I think they're pretty common, but for those who aren't currently building production apps, nothing I'm doing here is anything new or special, but I feel like the more that we can show our process, the more we learn. The first method um, I don't recommend, I'm not going to show it. When I first started designing, it was simply um, a Photoshop file of every different screen with layer comps and would literally drop that Photoshop file to an engineer and let them look through it, measure it by hand, and just start coding. Um, I know some people still work like this. For me, it seemed like the least efficient way and caused the most issues, and there was the biggest um, delta of like what I designed and what got built. Number two, in Netflix we designed a lot. In Keynote, this is a method I learned from Ted Boda. He learned it at Apple, and uh, it was the core way I designed um, UX and UI for apps. And so I'm gonna walk through a little, one of those files, not obviously in Netflix, because I can't show that work, but a side project that I worked on. I'm gonna show you kind of the design file and then what that looks like in a spec. So this is a project I worked on called Flash. Um, it was a photo booth app um, that had an iOS component. So this is kind of how I structured my files in Keynote. I have other um, tutorials on this if you ever are curious. But I essentially have these nested groups of things. This is kind of the overview of a launch screen or kind of an onboarding process. Um, I have a design overview and then a design spec. Um, these all expand, you can look into them, so we'll, we'll dig in. Uh, the nice thing about using Keynote is that my whole file, my whole spec, my whole design exploration and iteration was all in Keynote. Um, I could present from this document, I could animate and screen capture animations in this document, I could prototype out of this document, and I could also export um, PDFs and HTML documentation to the developer um, or PM or manager, whoever I was working with. So that was like one of the best things about this that I liked um, and I'm not obviously using now. Um, I'll get into what I'm using now later. But I, I still really love that about Keynote and even opening this file makes me miss it a little bit. So I'm gonna jump into uh, the design. I'm just gonna jump to straight design here. I basically have um, two different sections. Um, one that being the featured gallery, which is the core main part of the app and then login. But within uh, the featured gallery area, this is a simple stream of uh, events and photo galleries. So as you can see, this is all like actual live UI that's drawn here in Keynote. Um, there are some uh, master templates where like this device and things sit. But essentially this would look like any artboard and sketch or illustrator would look like. Um, and each screen is a different slide. So I can quickly um, tab through here and look at, you know, this is the main root view, this is the view um, with search exposed. If it's not um, hidden, there's no filters. Or this is search active. Uh, this is an actual event. Um, once you tap into it, this is an event scrolled. This is an event with images selected. And then I get into like different share states for different types of media. So these are all like different statefulness of sharing. Photo detail view, photo detail share, um, so you can see a very basic photo app, but you know within 20 screens you can quickly see the app and it's very easy to walk through. You can even hyperlink. I would hyperlink these and walk through in a presentation mode to show uh, how the app worked when I was doing walkthroughs or screen capture that if I was working remotely and send the videos. But you can see this is kind of the original design file. This is a, the essential UI of what I worked out. Um, for more complex apps like at Google and Netflix, I would have a whole section that was just devoted to like information architecture and wireframes and the structure of the app so that when you started diving into these sections, it made sense of what you were talking about. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward app and there was already an existing build. So there was no need to redo the UX. This is more of like a, a repolish of the UI. The interesting part is I would literally just duplicate this um, group of slides. You can do that just by hitting like Command D. I have a, an, an automatic um, duplicate of these. What I would go, then do once the design was final is I would take these duplicated slides and put specs on top of them and take components out and detail them. So jumping straight into this design spec, this is kind of like the group heights and the main structure of like the core UI of like the app bars and the, these kind of event tiles. 
Um, I have some detail as far as like the image opacity, um, and I'm calling out some some um, some jargon for the project. Uh, this is a good example of what like one of those tiles as a component looks like for spacing typography. Very detailed views of like what we're doing with iconography with the um, active tab UI, um, how big this actual tab is. Show a little bit about icon color, um, typical spec stuff, but this is kind of how I would represent a component within one part of the UI in one page for the developer. I would also, you know, kind of show asset size with like some of these nice little details with like an outline stroke here. The issue that I found with this is that as I go through and start defining other areas, there are common shared styles that obviously I'm duplicating across many slides. And as things evolve and iterate, it, bec it became harder to maintain consistency across this entire keynote document. So in a lot of my later files, what I would do is create one core style sheet with a specific naming convention and then just reference that naming convention across these specs. So there was only one sheet that had all of the actual detailed values, um, hex uh, values, dimensions, whatnot. Um, and then I would just reference that sheet across the document. So as you can see, I, I would go through every view, um, show how the layout aligns, what's fixed, what floats, what's centered, show the variance of options. And I would do this across every page. Um, sometimes I would, this, what I'm doing here is I'm actually zooming in and screen capturing this and then pasting it back in the document just to show like zoomed in detail of what's going on for pixel perfection. Button states I would show this way. Um, so on and so forth. This is all very boring, uh, but it gives you a little idea of what um, my, my specs look like when I would design a keynote. And then all of this is obviously just the UI. I'm just drawing all of this natively on top um, in Keynote. The nice thing is that in Keynote, because it's all drawn here, I could just simply select it. Um, and if I had this open, I could actually see what size this was. So it was very easy. Uh, the nice part about Keynote was all one layer, so this is all very easy to access and get the dimensions of. So essentially what I would do is after I'm done with that document, I would simply make uh, one big export to PDF and export this at the best resolution I could get, so it was uh, high resolution, and then deliver a PDF. There are also people that I knew that would uh, actually publish this to a URL and have an HTML page for uh, shareability. But most scenarios of PDF worked fine. Usually most of these projects had an internal um, project management system that I would put that PDF in. So since then, um, at Google I moved to using full sketch just because of a lot of Sketch's benefits um, for designing UI. At Google, I can't obviously show a lot of the work I did at Google um, in those files, but I would design in Sketch um, I would export all of my work to um, an actual Google uh, drawing or a Google presentation. A lot of this was the limitation of having things to be private for Google's um, scenarios. But it was actually a really nice way and similar to Kino that we'd put um, our designs exported in a presentation and um, note things up, inspect things up, um, comment things up in the actual presentation software. And then that became the deliverable because there's commenting and shareability across that document. So I'm not gonna go through a screen capture of that, but it's a slight variant on my Keynote workflow in that I would design in Sketch or Keynote and export that, put it in a, a Google presentation or a Google drawing and use those um, line and text tools for specs. Um, that became a, a common way that we shared a lot of documentation, um, specs and standards um, at Google. Because it can't go so my current workflow, and um, my favorite, obviously, since it's my current one, is all through Sketch and Zeppelin. Uh, these are obviously common UI tools uh, for those of you that are designers. For those of you that you aren't, um, they're great tools. Go look at Sketch app um, and Zeppelin. Zeppelin is free, I believe, unless you have a premium account for sharing and for Teams. Um, Sketch is like 100 bucks or something like that. You can look it up. I'll put links below. Uh, the nice thing about Sketch is it's designed specifically for UI and it's also open for the developer community so there's lots of great plugins that help you um, with productivity and certain different things. So what we're looking at here is uh, an old file of our current marketing site. Um, it's very um, basic. If, you, if you've seen 
um, my eight point tutorial, I'll put that below as well, um, designing eight point templates. This will look familiar to you, but I basically have a web view, um, a tablet size view or small uh, browser view and a, and a mobile view. Um, these are all obviously drawn here. Some have symbols, some don't. The nice thing is that um, this is my, my favorite application design right now. Um, it works very well for iteration. Um, the symbols are great for um, using components across different designs and keeping those things updated similar to a style sheet. Uh, but there's two things that I love that, I, that are my favorite parts about Sketch. One is the ability to export SVGs as they are, as those vectors are sized in my document. So um, in this example, these are different logos to companies we have in a testimonial area um, right here. So we have these logos in here and those are sized a specific way in my design so that they look appropriate across different cards with different logos. So I have all of those logos here. Um, and I have them named with a convention and exported as PNGs. Um, likewise, I can take SVGs if they're vector and export those um, as I want them to appear in my document. I export all of these. It's real easy to just select the artboards, hit export, and create um, a directory of assets for your engineer. Um, currently, we export all our assets and sync them with Google Drive, and Google Drive becomes the core delivery um, of my assets to the engineering platform and to the application. I can show you that structure, it's nothing fancy, it's just you know a, a group of folders. Maybe I'll do a video. If you want a video of my file structure um, and how I keep my files organized, let me know. I can go through that even though it's kind of boring. Actually, Matt Smith, I think, just did one. Um, his was pretty great. I have some things I do differently, but um, if you don't follow MDS, Matt Smith, go check him out. He's doing a lot of tutorials as well. Um, so basically, once I have this done, if you don't use Zeppelin currently or you're unaware of it, the nice thing is that yeah, you can select all of your artboards and simply export them. So these are the three, let's say I want to just export these three artboards. I've got a lot of other stuff in here. Um, but let's just say I have these three artboards that I want to export. Um, it's as simple as it's as simple as selecting the artboards, going to plugins. You can't see it here with the screen capture. Um, but then there's, Zeppelin has an export, and you just put export and selected artboards. When you do this, uh, it's going to pop a dialog, and you're going to hit import. This crunches the sketch document, takes all of your um, items in your, in your, on your artboards, and makes them elements within Zeppelin. Uh, basically, this is Zeppelin, and my favorite part is that I have all of our interface, all of our iteration, all of our screens. The nice thing is that I can take an individual screen, like this and get the link and send that to an engineer or to Mark, whoever I'm working with um, specifically, or I can tag a whole category of these things and uh, it'll pull up everything that I've tagged, whether it's onboarding flow or graphic user interface or um, acquisition flow, whatever, whatever the flow or the category is, I can tag it and people can find them by the tags as well. The great thing as far as specs go, um, with this is that once you have your designs in Zeppelin, anyone that has access is able to go in here and actually look at the size, um, the visual treatments, the borders, the opacities, the colors, um, just by clicking and inspecting. So everything that I was doing um, in Keynote and specking out is immediately available to them just by going through this document. Um, I try to keep my documents as accurate as possible and pixel as perfect as possible but also Mikey and Bjorn and Matias, our engineers here, are very good at understanding what my intent is and making sure that it's um, coded the correct way. So having great engineers is also a huge benefit. Um, and they'll make changes like on the fly to make sure that things get done right. But essentially they can go here and have everything they need. Anything that's, that's not in here that they need, um, I'll export into a folder for them, but it's usually just a quick export to Zeppelin and some exports of SVGs to a link to that folder. Um, I honestly don't use the inspection tool much because I'm not implementing, I'm just exporting here. Um, but the shareability of this is exactly what um, Google Drive did for me when I was using Google Drive. Google gave one place for everything to be. Um, it became a very um, nice way to share my designs across a large, you know, a year project. Uh, one little like hack or one practice I use is I use these kind of title slides 
Um, this is something we did at Google as well. But when you have you know, a grid of things, it becomes very easy to understand what is where um, from a thousand foot view. I know if you have a paid um, account, you can actually create more projects and um, get more complicated, but this seems to work great. We can put as many um, designs as we want in this one project, and I separate them by tag and by these um, screen titles. So this is a little structure of, of what we have for Design Inc. I have an icon folder with all of our SVGs. This is where I export everything. All of this lives in a core GUI file where I export all the icons from. Um, but it becomes my source of truth for all the iconography we use. And then I simply have you know our app, the sketch files, um, different mocks, uh, the content all over Google Docs, archive, animations, whiteboards. Lastly, the nice thing about Sketch and Zeppelin is that they, those are really the only two apps you need. I don't really have to spec anything. All I have to do is make organized, precise files and make sure that I have uh, the vectors to export for any kind of assets or images that need to be used. Um, that was very quick. Hopefully that was useful. If you guys want to see more of this, um, let me know in the comments. Um, please subscribe if these are helpful for you. Um, tell your friends, tell your mom. If you do want to learn more about organization and look at, uh, deeper parts of my workflow, let me know. I'm glad to de dive into more workflow st style stuff. But I wanted to answer this question because I heard it a couple times. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, thanks for watching and uh, happy designing.